High-speed data transmission, known as carry Ethernet, has the ability to transform businesses, allowing them to perform backups quickly, to enable disaster recovery faster than ever before, and to connect two or more sites quickly, easily, and cheaply. But I wonder, how many people realize that today, right now, it's also saving lives? Take the case of Virginia Mason Hospital in Seattle, Washington, USA. This is a hospital whose many branches and clinics are spread out over hundreds of square miles, an area riddled with waterways and other topographical features. It used to result in lengthy journeys for people attending clinics. But now, carrier Ethernet has changed all that. And in particular, one of Virginia Mason's patients is quite convinced that without the fast diagnosis and treatment he received, he wouldn't be here today. And it's all as a result of that high-speed data transmission we talked about just now. Bill Dean lives out in the country with his wife, Lenny. Although retired, he's very active and has a number of hobbies, including model making. But in 2004, during a regular checkup, Bill got some devastating news. It all started in October of 04 when I went in to see Dr. Cowan over on Bainbridge Island for a scheduled annual physical. And kind of in passing, I mentioned to him that I'd, I'd had some rather faint traces of, of blood in, in my uh, saliva. And we did a chest x-ray that day, which showed a suspicious spot on his lung. We weren't sure exactly what it was, but we were able to um, schedule a scan of his lung, a CT just a few days later. The Seattle people called him that day and said, we've seen something here and we'd like you to do a CT scan, it's still at the Bainbridge Clinic, the following Monday. Since the availability of the high-speed connection, we've been able to have the scans done on a mobile scanner right at our location, so we can get them done quite quickly. Which he did, and he transmitted that also and he received another phone call from Seattle that said, get him over here tomorrow because we think he has lung cancer. It would have taken Bill three hours to get from his home to Seattle. Instead, he was able to go to a local clinic which had a high-speed connection back to Seattle. This means that instead of wasting time traveling around the clinics, doctors can look at the detailed images sent from the clinics and provide a centralized diagnostic service directly to where the patients are. But what does that mean in practice? The um, mobile vans that go to the various clinics, uh, they actually capture the information and then uh, they then transmit that either to a local service in some c cases and then send that across the, n the network to a repository where the actual images are, are saved. We take two pictures to begin with and they look more like conventional x-rays. And off of this, we plan how many pictures we're going to take, where we're going to stop, and where we're going to start. So this scanner takes 16 slices at a time, so it's a very fast, a fast high-speed scanner. The important thing is that we're in contact with the radiologist so that we know that we're doing the correct scan um, on the patient, what they need to have done for their symptoms uh, and, and for the uh, clinician, that we're actually getting him the information that, that he needs to have. Those uh, images are actually accessible from anywhere on my network for any of the, either the primary care physicians or the radiologists. Now the radiologists are going to look at the very diagnostic images that require uh, higher uh, end equipment. So that's where the reads are made, the prognosis is made. All the images come straight to my workstation. Uh, I can check the images while the patient is on the table in case we need to do additional uh, images, uh, in case there's a, a life-threatening or other finding that we can then call the physician and get the appropriate treatment for the patient as soon as possible. How does the high-speed transmission of images over carrier Ethernet actually help to improve patient care? Well, three things really. First, the patient can have the scan close to home in a familiar place. Second, we get the results quickly, often within an hour. And third, the images are available to everyone who needs them. In Bill's case, he ended up seeing a, a pulmonologist, a hematologist, oncologist, a um, um, radiation oncologist and a thoracic surgeon. 
and the images were available to, um, to them and myself on our network very quickly, simultaneously. And what do patients think of the high-speed system? They love it. This is, this is so wonderful for patient care. And they're so happy to, one, not have to drive downtown, two, to hopefully get it done the day they're here, uh, and to have an instantaneous report, or almost instantaneous report, is fabulous. They are, they're, they're just delighted with this service. It helps us. It cuts down on calling patients back for additional pictures, because while the patient is here, we can check with the radiologists and see if they need anything more before we get them off the table. So it's much more efficient for us and for the patients. So the high-speed connection help speed the diagnosis and reassure him quickly? Correct. And I think it facilitated the type of uh, team medicine that uh, improves outcomes and quality of care and the patient's experience. We know that there's a strong emphasis on teamwork here at Virginia Mason. How does Carry Ethernet help in that respect? Before the high-speed connection, it was difficult to really be all on the same page at the same time. Um, I might have an image uh, or obt obtain some imaging that I was concerned about but wasn't sure about the diagnosis. And while the radiologist was available by telephone, I could only describe the images and not have him be looking at the same image. Now I phone up, we go to the same page, literally, and uh, I can pretty much point to what I'm wondering about and, and get an answer immediately. And the same with the specialists uh, and and often the, the radiologist. Being completely filmless, it, it, it's an enormous benefit. I can be looking at the images on my workstation. All, uh, one or more other consulting physicians or the referring physician can look at the exact same images on, the, uh, on their desktop, on their PC, uh, and with the same speed, uh, and they can look, be looking at exactly what I'm looking at, so we can be talking on the phone and saying, look at this image or that image, and uh, it's uh, enormous uh, um, capability to be able to uh, add to patient care in that, in that fashion. In the past, we've had to uh, copy the films. Oftentimes, the copies uh, aren't the same resolution as the originals, and even if we're able to transport originals, then we have patients uh, lugging valuable originals around I had to go through sheets and sheets of film. It would be very uh, difficult to get out. We didn't have enough view boxes to hold. We would never be able to have enough view boxes to hold uh, the number of images that we need to look at currently. Images get lost. Only one, only one doctor can look at the images at one time. Uh, they have to transport them by uh, taxi or however, and you'd get these large... Uh, bulk of uh, film that was very cumbersome, and I certainly don't miss, uh, you know, looking at the, looking at hard copy. But we certainly the filmless situation that we have now with the high speed uh, transfer of images, uh, it makes uh, my job a whole lot easier, and I think it uh, helps the patient uh, in the long run. So, how did Virginia Mason Hospital manage before it had stalled carry Ethernet? Did the new technology really make that much of a difference? Before. Um we had carrier ethernet, we had uh, multiple T1 links to our satellites. And to give you a kind of a um, metric, uh, a T1 is uh, 1.4 megabits. And so three of those is like four and a half, so five megabits. And carrier ethernet is 100 megabits, so 20 times the speed. And what that does for you then is give you the opportunity to go from a four to a 16 slice CT van. And for images, that makes a big difference. Currently we are using uh, we have 16 slice uh, multi-detector CT scanners on the mobile vans, and in the near future, uh, we'll hopefully be in the 64 slice uh, scanner range. Um, that requires a very large number of images uh, coming over uh, the lines, and uh, you need those to uh, come over quite rapidly in order to work efficiently. There's a, just a ton of a ton of data that comes over, um, you know, upwards to a thousand images per case. Uh, and with the 64 slice scanner, it's going to be more than a thousand images. And uh, you need to be able to look at those images very rapidly uh, and just scroll through them. And that's what my job depends on: is things working uh, and looking at the images on the workstation and dictating the report. So it seems that there are many benefits, but just how does the technology work in practice? What's the setup? The um, carrier Ethernet fits into how my environment is, is such that we have a a metro, which is where our data center is, and main campus environment where the hospital research center and about six other buildings are that are in the Virginia Mason main campus environment. Then we have 10 clinics. So our metro main campus has a high-speed link between it, and also we put in the 100 megabit links to all of our satellites so they can then participate in 
a more robust network environment. So right now, my organization support 5,000 nodes across my network. I have telecommunications that have 5,000 phones, which is a redundant network. I have 4,000 desktop devices that my desktop team supports and another 250 servers that my server group. So it's real important that this network infrastructure is sound because that's predominantly how we provide all of our application services. Steve, you're using Verizon as your service provider. Can you tell us about your relationship with them? This was a new service for Verizon, and Verizon really did a good job with us in terms of getting our networks connected because that's really what it is, is we're now tied into their network as part of our network, and so... Uh, my staff being closely linked with theirs and both bringing up the service and maintaining the service is really key. And the, the relationship there has uh, gotten stronger, so I would uh, clearly endorse them. I believe there are cost advantages to carry Ethernet. Can you tell us something about that, please? Cost is a big thing, especially we're a uh, not-for-profit organization, and therefore cost is is very important to us, along with the cost of health care has been going up. So I think everyone has their... Uh, pulse on, on costs, but one of the things is even with the demands of increased bandwidth, the cost is what had to happen to make that viable. So with the carrier Ethernet um, product, it finally had a cost metric that made sense for us. We could actually provide that type of service, and it was, was something that was clearly not only affordable, but reasonable, and, and really cost-effective for both the enterprise and for our patients. There are benefits of this carrier Ethernet system outside of pure patient care, aren't there? By the carrier Ethernet being extended to all, all my clinics, the physicians, primary care physicians, some of them do roam between the clinics. They can access their, the applications, their systems, their email at any of those clinics. Can you tell us how carrier Ethernet will, will help in the future? How do you see its role expanding? The carrier Ethernet really provides us just the kind of the avenue to help us grow our environment, especially for our satellite clinics, because it allows us to provide better technology. Like I said, the, just in the radiology realm, going from the 4 to 16 to potentially 64 slice CT. It also allows us to um, do innovation to provide better applications and healthcare at the edges in terms of our clinics and provide that type of service. And and Virginia Mason being one of the five, top 5% five in the nation based on health gr grades, this is how we are able to provide uh, newer technology and, and provide better access in terms of our health care to our patients and do a better job of actually uh, improving health care. So Ethernet has enhanced existing services, it's enabled new ones, and it's provided a considerable amount of future-proofing. But what's the view of those people who matter most in the hospital, the patients? So, Bill, what was it that impressed you most about the health care that you received? It was the speed. The level of complexity, I suspect, could have been addressed by any of, of the larger medical groups here in the city. But in this case, I went all the way from, I think there's a little bit of blood here, to chemotherapy in about two and a half days. What's your overall opinion of Virginia Mason? What sort of health care have you had? Well, I'd, I'd leave them my firstborn child as a, as a gift if I thought I could get away with it. Uh, absolutely wonderful people. That I, I couldn't ask, have asked for, for kinder, gentler, more knowledgeable people in, in my hour of need. How has your recovery been? There's been no reoccurrence. I've had now several CT scans since. There's no sign of it. Uh, the blood chemistry is showing positive, and so I'm hopeful that I'll lead somewhat of a, of a normal life now. Bill, what would have happened if you hadn't had that fast health care? I think I would have died. High-speed data transmission, carrier Ethernet, isn't just something that makes bits flow faster and more cheaply, although those are among its key benefits. In the real world, people's lives are at stake, and in this case, we're delighted to say that Bill Dean is still with us. And it's all as a result of Virginia Mason Hospital's decision to connect up its outlying clinics so that doctors could provide a near-immediate diagnosis and treatment for fatal illnesses such as Bill's. So it's not just about business benefits, it's about people too.